Hey y'all, what's happening there? It's uh, Johnny Glock again. Um, I am doing a video today on, I wouldn't say troubleshooting, maybe just building in general. I'm trying to uh, dial in a trigger uh, for a gentleman that uh, shoots in the name of Johnny Glock, um, Frank. And um, he sent me his gun. I have already done everything like polish the slide tabs, uh, the rail tabs rather, um, tightened the slide, it is a Zebtec slide, I've done some tweaks and stuff there, I've worked on the striker, I've done everything I can to the gun. So now I'm kind of getting into the part where uh, you know I'm going to uh, get a functional trigger in here. And I was starting to build this and I was you know running into some uh, safety issues and stuff like that and I thought it would be like a really good video um, to show kind of how I'm um, working with several different bars and whatnot and how the tolerances are and just even how the most minute little slice of something can, pardon me, make the gun unsafe. So um, bring the camera down like I do and we're gonna take a look at this fine piece of equipment down here. So here is um, it's a Zeb slide. And I've already done some peening to it uh, here, and uh, you know, you barely see like a little tapping marks on there. But everything that I wanted to do to it is done. Uh, the striker is completely smooth, and you see the kind of mirror finish on that. Everything that I want to do. So, you know, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. This is this is a trigger that I built. That I, uh, you know, I really like the action on it. I love the action on it. Well, let's start. The, let's start with this. I'm going to use this is a Gen 3 gun, so I'm going to use a Gen 3 bar. Uh, the thing with this shooter is he likes a quick break. So, um, if I match this up with a 3.5 connector in a Gen 3 gun, which is this frame is a Gen 3, um, and when I'm testing, I pretty much just use the the trigger pin. I'll bring this out just a little bit. There we go, just, I'm gonna throw you guys off either with your angle, so, like anyone. There we go, at least get it straight. Except for this thing over here. <laughs> like, pretend it doesn't exist. Anyway, um, so, uh, I pop that in and I put the trigger, trigger housing pin in. And just because of the way this is uh, stippled, it doesn't wanna kinda go through sometimes, so. That's that, and so when I put the gun together, this is the Gen 3 pull. You see all that sponge? Oh, did you hear that? And it just went off right by itself. Hear it? I didn't even pull it, so I'm gonna go like this and pull, and then I'm gonna rack, and wait, and go let off, see, and it shot, it fired. So this is definitely not a good combination right here. Spongy and dangerous. See, it's just going right off by itself. Now that's pretty hairy because I know the engagement on this, the, the slide to frame is as tight as it's going to get. And so, um, you know, there's a couple things. This bar might work in another gun, but it's not working today, folks. So um, I'm going to pop that out. And then we're going to switch up to another. This one's into one. There's the jammer. Okay, let me see. This looks might no, 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 here it is. Okay, perfect. So this is um another bar that I started to use that I really um, dialed in as far as the areas back here and um, did a bunch of stuff to the did a bunch of stuff to the um, radius there and it is a gen 4 bar and guess what it's going in a gen 3 gun oh my god it's blasphemy so uh, and what this is going to give us is a quicker break and so when I when I pull it like this and I if I have tension coming this way on the vertical extension and I push down that that is actually not letting this drop. But if I let go, it's dropping enough that it could potentially 
um, drop the striker. It all depends on engagement and some other things that we've talked about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this together. And so now let's look at this. So we're at a wall right there. Little nudge there to hit the wall and then it should break pretty quickly. And it is. So there's your break and now your reset is only that. So, oh, and now you see it didn't pick it up again. So once again, there's some functional issues. And that's kind of what you have to do and you have to take your finger off and do that over and over again to see. And so now what I'm going to do is, and that might have been every once in a while when you throw one of these in, they're not, um, you have to make sure I'm getting this in here. They're not really uh, seated, so you first or second pull, you have to give it a second to settle in. So now I'm going to put this on because I want to make sure the engagement is right where I want it. And this engagement, you know, if, I know these are always so hard to see, but for the most part, once I pull down here, it's 100%. So that first time it dropped, I'm thinking it wasn't, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that engagement is so solid, it's unreal. And another thing, when you're testing these guns, you, you, you know, everyone wants to go like this and when they drive fire, and I get it but that's not the way the gun functions sometimes, so you really have to take that into consideration. Um, but what we're looking for here is this quick, you know, there's a little nudge right there and then a quick break. Now, is that nudge enough to keep this gun safe? So then I'm gonna do, do something like this, and thank God there's a, you know, the, actually when I'm doing this with a lot of guns, I, I just put one of these on just to make sure we're okay. So if I drop, if I hit that, okay, it held. But it may not hold every time, so. There, it's, it went. So basically, this is an unsafe trigger and we have to start over. But the thing is, I really like the action on this trigger. I like what it's feeling like. Um, and I've spent some time with the, I've really spent some time with the bar to get it to behave like I want it to. So with that said, I'm going to try to do my best to keep this bar. Now, if I put another bar in real quickly, I'm going to save this one here because it's the one I like. There's the Gen 3 bar we had. Here's another Gen 4 bar. Now, remember the safeties, the trigger safeties are modified on these. And I know exactly where I can cut on this tab right there to get it to be, uh, you know, Gen 3s and Gen 4s are different. So that cut right there is a Gen 4 cut. For a Gen 3, that cut would be different and um, we're going to drop this in and see how it functions. And this bar is not as refined, but it might be... So once again, I have exactly what I'm looking for there as far as break. And resets a little bit longer on this one. And it's just not as refined. So, and now we'll do the the, the, the test where actually I'm going to hit it over here more toward, the, more toward the edge of the table because then everything doesn't jump. But if I'm smacking it here like this, and okay, it held that time, and then I smack it like this. Jeez. Well, it's actually holding rather well. Okay, that time it didn't. So once again. This has to be changed. I'm gonna bring it back down. And this is just, I do these tests as I'm working on the gun. And um, I'm sure you know these are Glocks so they can handle it. And I'm sure you'd be appreciative of it if you send my gun, you know, send me your gun, you know it's getting run through these tests before actually I do the, the more, you know, the, the, the more uh, other tests like horizontal muzzle, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that was the horizontal drop test, but if it's dropping out there, we got problems. So um, what I did was, and I know you've seen me do this before, I prepped, I started this where I, you know, took out the safety tab on this so it could be cut more like the Gen 3, so I know I have the correct clearances in the back there. So now what I have to do is find the bar that I really liked before, which this might be at my hand, let me see. 
That's not the gen, it's the gen three bar. This is the one still roughed. Okay, this is the one that I've done all the work to that I like. Um, yeah, that's it. So what I have to do is the video that you guys saw where I take apart this thing, take the safety tab out. Unless you like do this a lot, you could really kind of mess it up. So I'll grab it right there, and back it out a little bit. So I like to take it so the whole entire pin doesn't fall out. Okay, so that goes out, and this is the one I prepped up right here. So this is going in. And so now, as you can see, and look at there's not much of a difference, but it is. So you can see now it's not flush to this right here. It is over top of it a little bit. See that? I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. The other one, okay, I'll bring the other one up. Look where that's cut. And then look where that safety tab is cut. It is flush. That's a, yeah, that, that you can get away with the Gen 4s. With the Gen 3s, you know what I mean? It's just because of the way the shelf is. And uh, you're going you're gonna to drop actually off the shelf here um, if you don't have that safety margin and you're trying to push the trigger. Now, the other thing is that makes the, it's going to make the, the pre-travel a little bit longer. But the point is if you're shooting from reset, it really doesn't matter too much. It's only your first shot that you're experiencing a little bit of a, a little bit more of pull. And um, then after that, you know, you're shooting, most of the guys, and then we have these conversations, you know, shooting from reset. So to have, um, okay, so I can't back, the, it, it's the trigger tab is not popping out, so I have to adjust the shoe and take this out a little bit, because this is a set screw, I'm going to back it out. Drop it in real quick with the trigger pin. I don't even need the locking block at this point. Okay, so it popped out. So now we have a trigger shoe that is engaging and the lighting is just not agreeing with us right here. So maybe I'll turn it this way. Same thing. Good Lord. At least you're getting to see a good look at the stippling job. So what I'm trying to say is, there, you hear that? That's engaging. So, and that's what we needed. We needed that to, to grab the frame. And then we're going to put in the I don't know have to push these in, but just because it's a stipple job, it's a little up there. So so now you can see you have a little bit more pre-travel in there in the system. And um, since I stouted that up, you're getting them feel that hear that that's it's kind of smacking the frame a little bit, so I'm gonna have to loosen that up. But from here. It's that quick break that I'm looking for. And then you can see how short this reset is if you're shooting from reset. And that's after the first shot. That's, I mean, this is, this is a, a good 1911 trigger. That is not even a 16th of an, well, right about a 16th of an inch. And you can draw this stuff just to Sure that it's grabbing every time, which it is. I'm checking the engagement. This is the bar that already had the engagement, so a lot of those values are not going to change because of the, uh, there we go, right there, are not going to change because uh, it's kind of the connector. Everything else that I liked about the bar, I was able to keep. The only thing I didn't like about, the, the, about it was this, uh, you know, was the safety tab needed a little bit more meat on it. So I'm going to open this up and show you how that translates. And how it translates is now, now that we put a little bit more material back in here and we push down on this, let me tell a photo us. Now that we put more material here, okay? You can see that's grabbing the frame. If I push on it with my thumb, it is not going to disengage right there. You can see it. That's a really good shot right back there of the trigger safety tab, okay? That is definitely going to not let this go down it is right on the shelf. 
back it out. You can see it right there. It is still on that shelf. A little, the, uh, where the other ones were, were a little bit further. They were pushing it like so. See the angle right there that starts to appear right there? And then this one is click right there. So it is more, it is definitely on the shelf. It is sitting right there. And that is, what you're hearing is the safety tab engaging right there. And that is going to keep it. This is not going back. I don't care. It's not going to go back any further because of the safety tab here is engaged right there. And once that safety tab is disengaged, that's when you're going to see. But it's all the way up on the shelf on that one. So this is, I am going to venture to guess that when I beat this gun, <laughs> it is not going to, it's not going to bulk. So I'll bring this up here. And it's easier to hit the edge of this because there's more solidness here. So here, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. See, I, I knew that thing was going to not go anywhere. And so look, we have this super short reset. Let me get my finger behind it. It's aggressive, it's fast too, so I mean that Frank's gonna love this gun. So and right now, just for my estimation, I've done all the smoothing and everything, so this probably should be pulling about three. And see it it is. It's pulling three pounds just as we discussed. But what's going to happen is over time, because I, I, I know how these guns react, especially you know the different slides, Suarez, ZevTech, like you name it, I've worked with all of them. So once again, and we went through this before, it is a three pound pull. Okay, let's do it one last time. And once again, it is consistently breaking at three. It's not averaging three like we talked about last time. We have engagement back here. We've uh, hit the gun significantly enough that I know there's a little that in there, which I um, I really don't like that feeling and I know what I'm gonna do with that. So if I take the gun apart and pull this out of the way. And that's the cool thing about having all this stuff. I can steal different, you know, stock safeties uh, out of here and be able to put it in another gun. Whereas, you know, years and years ago before I learned how to do all this stuff, I was style, oh, I ruined that bar, you know, because of just the safety. But now that's not the case anymore. So I'm going to back this out a hair. And that still might not clean it up the way I want it to, but I have to go, you know, increments at a time to get what I'm looking for. And it did. It's gone. So remember, I'd go like this, and it would be if you back up the video, you'd be like, chicka, chicka, chicka. That's just a nice smooth safety now. Now when you hit the, when you engage in the wall, you can just hear me engage in the wall. It's really just nudgy, you know what I mean? It's not stacking or anything, it's just wall. And that's really, you know, especially when the beeper goes off, you know, that's not really gonna be uh, too perceivable to you. So there's the break. Reset break. Reset break. Reset break. This is all happening at three pounds. It is tight as a duck's arse because I already did the tightening here. The lockup itself is tight, so you can see this barrel is like just, you know, it, it's tightened to the point where I, you know, you don't want to over tighten it, but this gun is going to race and run like a machine, like a Rolex. So basically, uh, I just figured I'd show you that to explain to you the difference. You know, I know these values off the top of my head, so if I see a trigger safety and I say, oh, I'm matching that with, now if that was going in a, if that was going in this housing with a different cut, that would work because I know the margins with uh, the shelf here and how that's gonna function. Uh, and, and that all has to become second nature, you know, and it also depends on what connector I'm matching that up with. Some connectors will not even allow, uh, the first bump is gonna st stop you at the connector before you even hit the shelf, the drop shelf. So there's all kind of different um, pluses and minuses that we uh, talk about. And uh, you know, the name of the game is to keep the gun safe. At the end of the day, you want to do exactly, um, you know, I want to do exactly what the shooter wants, but at the same time, I want to make sure that it's a completely safe gun. 
and um, most guys get it, you know what I mean? Like, I'll get the call of a guy that, like wants a two-pound trigger with no pre-travel whatsoever, and it's usually like they, they probably haven't shot a ton, so and realize like, eh, well, you know, do you shoot from reset? And you know, it, it's it's one of those things where a Glock trigger, you know, it's sub three, like say in between two and a half and three, the reset is awesome. It's completely safe unbelievably safe. Um, of course, if someone wants those things, I have to build the triggers differently. I'm doing a whole entire different thing to get that trigger to be like a pound, a pound and a half, two pounds. It's not even in, in this whole realm. It's a, it's a whole different, uh, you know, you're drilling out, taking this off and you're re, you're re positioning the actual shoe on the bar and you have to cut the shoe. I mean, you have to cut the bar and, you know, re-drill the hole. And it's a, it's, it's definitely, and you have to have the gun in your hand. So, but for the most part, you know, those, you, uh, those of you that have the kits or that are, you know, thinking of ordering a kit or you're sending me your gun and you're knowing that these are, this is what I'm, you know, working within these parameters to uh, make sure the gun is safe. You might have a little nudge of pre-travel, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to be able to sleep better. I'm going to be able to sleep better. We're going to know it's not a gun that it's going to ever. And you can see I was striking that gun pretty hard on there, Frank. I'm sorry for that, but I mean, uh, I know, you, I know you get it. So, um, and I appreciate you letting me use your gun. Even though I didn't ask you, I appreciate you letting me use your gun for this video. So anyway, um, yeah, this is getting ready to, I'm gonna go shoot the crap out of it. Put about, not the crap out of it, I'll shoot like 200 rounds maybe just to make sure it's functioning exactly how I want it to. And then uh, let's get chipped out. So, just another video from Johnny Glock. Um, www.johnnyglock.com is the website. You can call me at 941. 376-4383. Uh, I, I did have another parfait today here at uh, Quick Draw Defense in Venice. And um, I tell you what, man, they, they better, someone better eat all those because there's some left in the fridge. I could get rid of them. They got to get rid of them because I'm like ready, ready to lose it. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it. So uh, keep subscribing, keep checking out the kit. Not your subscribe, but you know, subscribe if you want. And I got a bunch of more videos coming on the Gen 5s and a bunch of cool other stuff. And I still have some things in the work as far as um, some designs that I'm coming out with, with some uh, partnering up with some machine shops and stuff like that. So hey, y'all have a great day and take care. We'll see you.